And if you're wondering about the nomenclature with blob, I believe it stands for binary large object. Um, so it's something that's been around for a while. Um, at first, if you see the name, you might think it's like kind of a strange choice, um, but it's actually been around for quite quite a while. Um, and yeah, all right. So so now that we have this block blob um, from our file name, what we can do is just straight up upload it to Azure. So um, this is an asynchronous action that we can await. Upload from file async. I'm sorry, actually upload from stream async. And we can pass it this open read stream uh, method that we have on our file. And so this is the action to actually upload it to the cloud. And now we can also await the action to set it um, on the user's profile image. So let's use the user service for that. And we'll have the user ID and the block blob dot URI. And then finally, we can redirect. And we'll just pass an object with the user ID. And so that way, we're actually going to hit our profile detail action now and just return back to the very same user's profile. So yeah, I think some of this can probably be refactored out and be the responsibility of either the upload service or um, another class, um, but yeah, this gives you the kind of kind of an idea of the flow of actually what's happening here. So if we revisit the user service, so application user service, and we scroll down to this set profile image method, you see that we wrote it to take the um, user ID here as well as the URI. And so we just set the profile image URL to that URI and then simply save changes. So that comes back from Azure telling us exactly where we can find the image on the internet. So let's go ahead and fire this up and see if we can upload a profile image. All right, so I'm gonna head over to settings and then my profile, and then we'll select browse here. And I'll just go to the demo app here and grab a profile image. And then I'll just go into our app here and in the web project in our www root folder, I had these stock user images. And so let's just go ahead and grab one. So I'll grab this one. So I'll grab this one. So I'll just grab this one and we'll click open. And now if we submit the form, actually what I'd like to do is uh, set a breakpoint here and we'll go ahead and set it on our profile controller, upload profile image. Okay, so now I'll click submit. And so we hit the post method and you can see the uh, form file and you can see that the file name here and the content disposition tells us that it's form data and it gives us the, uh, the file name as well. So I'm gonna hit F10 and hit F10 again to get the user ID and then hit F10 to get our connection string. Uh, and it looks like our connection string is null, so let's go ahead and fix this. So I'm gonna hit stop. And what we need to do is actually head into our startup.cs, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a singleton of our configuration. And then we'll go, go ahead and see if this resolves our issue. So we'll start the server back up and I'll sign in. And then we'll go to my profile and browse, pick an image and go ahead and click submit. And we'll F10 to get our user ID and then our connection string. Uh, and our configuration is actually also null. So that is just something that, yeah, forgot to set here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We're gonna get our connection string uh, from our configuration. And oops, before I forget, let's go ahead and make sure we set this configuration is equal to configuration. Yeah, and 
Then we're going to get our blob container, get the file name from the upload, grab a reference to a block blob, and upload it to the cloud. And then we're going to set the profile image based on the URI that we get back here. Okay, so let's fire up IS and give this a try. All right, so let's fire up the server and give it a try. And I've got a breakpoint here set on the post method for the upload profile image as well. So if I go ahead and sign in and then click settings, my profile, we'll go ahead and browse for an image. And I'm just gonna select an image I have stock here. Um, I'm just gonna, and I'm just gonna select an, Im an image I have here from some stock photos. So we'll select this one. And then when I select submit, Okay, so I hit the post method and we get the user ID properly, um, the configuration. We are going to grab the uh, connection string to our Azure storage account. So that looks good. We get a blob container. We check out the content disposition, which you can see here. In fact, you can see it on the file, iform file object here as well. In fact, you can see the file name right here. And you can also check out the headers. So this is where we can see our content disposition type. This is where we can see our content disposition as well as the content type. Um, and so we could do some validation here on the content type as well. All right, so we're gonna hit F10. And so you can see we grabbed the file name now. Um, and if you hover over the content disposition file name property, you'll see why I trimmed the quotation marks. All right, so we get a block blob reference. And if we check out this type, it's pretty interesting. We can see the cloud blob directory. And in fact, we have a primary and secondary storage URI here as well. And there's our URIs. This is where our image will be on the internet. And so I'm just gonna hit F10 through here. And so now we've actually uploaded the file. And now we're gonna set the profile image and then we'll redirect. So I'm gonna hit F5. Okay, so we should have a profile image. We probably don't have the CSS for it set up properly yet. Um, but if we expand the div here, we can see that the uh, background image is indeed hitting this web URL. And if we visit it, and if we, and if we go ahead and actually visit that URL, and if we go ahead and actually visit that URL, we can see that we get the image downloaded. So I think we just need to, so you can see that we have a reference to the URL here. Um, so I think we just need to style our profile page so that the uh, image URL appears in a div properly uh, with some width and height. So let's go ahead and fix that. We can keep the uh, server running here and we'll go to views, profile, detail. And here we have an ID of user profile image that is storing our user's profile image. So what I'm going to do is head over to our site.css. Again, that's in webroot CSS, site.css. And just under user profile here, I'm going to create a reference. I'm going to create a uh, CSS ID selector here for profile image. Display inline block with 200 pixels, height 200 pixels, and we'll set a background color like some default color here as well. Okay, so we're not actually going to use any library like you, you might use Image Magic or something if you wanted to actually take any size image for a profile image. Okay, so I'm not going to use an Im Okay, so our, our upload is going to count on Okay, so our CSS is actually gonna count on the image being square. And if you wanted to go ahead and make sure the image was uh, square regardless of you know the dimensions that were uploaded, then you may wanna implement some service that would then implement something like Image Magic. As an example of one library you could use to actually format the images that a user uploads and kind of constrain them. All right, so we'll head back to the page and I'm gonna refresh. And yeah, there you can see our profile image. In fact, if I browse and select another one and go ahead and submit this and I'll control shift F9 to get rid of all of our breakpoints and then hit F5. All right, so yeah, we get a new profile image and I can continue to do this and it will just update the profile image for this user. Likewise, when we go to our user's posts now, so in like forums, 
um, in this post, for instance, we can see the user's profile image as well. And if we click on their username, which in the case of my first user was also their email address, we get taken to their profile page. So that's kind of cool. Things are starting to come together a little bit. Um, clearly the styles need some work throughout the, throughout the application. And we need to do things like make sure that certain controller actions are authorized. But yeah, I think the next uh, major thing that we should implement is the ability to post replies to our posts. And at this point, that should be uh, a pretty straightforward exercise. Um, if you've made it this far in the, if you've uh, if you've made it this far through the series and ha already have some familiarity now with building out um, these various services and um, controllers and the way that the MVC framework kind of works together and the way that the uh, model view controller pattern kind of works. So let's go ahead and knock that out, and then we'll do. So let's go ahead and knock that out, and then shortly after, we'll look at how to actually host a SQL database on Azure and then finally deploy our entire application to Azure. We'll also look very shortly at writing some tests um, for our services. And then finally, we'll think about ways that we could improve our application um, from the very basic format that we've developed it, developed it into and just kind of think through some ideas of where we could take this uh, moving forward, of where we could take this design-wise moving forward. All right, with that, let's go ahead and get started on. All right, with that, let's go ahead and get started on our reply functionality.